So welcome all of you to the 16th Sleba webinar. And this uh, webinar will be, all, uh, will be on case study on the Rathugala non-commercialized indigenous community of Sri Lanka. And this uh, series is uh, organized by Sri Lanka Evaluation Association in collaboration with Asia Pacific Evaluation Association, uh, Evaluation Community of India, uh, Evaluate Sri Lanka and Center for Evaluation of University of Sri Javadanapura. So on behalf of SLEVA, I would like to welcome you all to this webinar. And uh, Anjana, next slide, please. So uh, my name is Hasiti Samara Singha, and I'm, I'm a co-leader for Evaluate uh, Sri Lanka. And today I will be your moderator. Uh, Anjana. So um, let me introduce some of the ground rules that we have. I request you uh, kindly uh, keep your microphone muted and video feed disabled at all the time. And if you have any questions, uh, you can leave it in the chat bar and they will be addressed during the Q&A session. And if you have any other concerns about the presentation, uh, you can email us at uh, sleva.sec uh, at uh, gmail.com. Uh, I mean, uh, if our production team can send those email addresses uh, to the chat bar, I think it will be helpful to our participants. And um, uh, 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 you have to go back can to you, uh, Please. So I would like to uh, welcome uh, Mr. Serge Eric uh, to give uh, opening remarks. And Mr. Serge Eric is a credential uh, evaluation, evaluator, visiting professor and international consultant. He is the co-chair of the Eval Indigenous Network, former president of the African Evaluation Association and founder and executive director of the Cameroon Center Evaluation and Development. He has more than 18 years of experience in research and evaluation of working with government entities, foreign affairs donors, such as Global Affairs Canada and Danish Foreign Affairs EU, EU and USA. Uh, further, he has experience with community-based organizations, including NGOs, civil society organizations in Africa and UN agencies, including UNICEF, ILO, UNDP, UN Women, WFP, UNESCO, FAO, and IFP. Mr. Serge Eric, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Ashika. Very impressive. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, everyone, uh, depending to where you are in the, in the world. Bonjour et bonsoir tout le monde, this is in French. Um, I'm so proud to be here today with this webinar. And then I want to firstly congratulate uh, the Sri Lanka Evasion Associations um, for this incredible job you did with this case study. Uh, Eva Indigenous, for those who don't know, is a, is a, a global network for indigenous evaluations. And then we are a member of uh, Eval Partners. And then uh, we are working to promote indigenous principle in evaluations. We simply mean that uh, we believe that traditional knowledge in evaluations matters, and then we should promote and give voice to those who are doing evaluation in the world. The world. Uh, currently, uh, we are achieving a special project, namely Voice Project. We started uh, four years ago, and then with this project, we are recording, you know, the the video and also regarding indigenous evaluation practice all over the world. So we are covering North America, Africa, Latin America, Asia, and then we are now looking to get colleagues from the Europe. Moreover, and then we are working toward to support, you know, in local networks. And this project is part of a small grant we have on board uh, for which we are so happy to get the partnership with the Sri Lanka Evaluation Associations. And we also provide the same support to the Pakistanis event associations. And also we are now provided to add other support for the Kenya, uh, um, for the um, participant, I mean, the Kenyan evaluation for uh, the Kenya association evaluations, but the name is you should know they have two in Kenya. But uh, I want also to remind that uh, this case study is a practical case study. 
among others, for, where, for which we want to push learning, learning about practice on the, on the ground. So um, I was so happy to get the support to all participants and then to also all colleagues who are connected. I'm happy to see that Florence is on board and then other friends also, they are connected. So um, this is what I thought to said. I also call other colleagues, and especially the Sri Lanka University Associations to continue this partnership with the Vi engineers because this year our annual plan also plan to get more support to uh, enlarge our partnership, not only in Asia, but also in Africa, as I said, and also with uh, other VOPES in the world. Thank you so much. And then I wish you a wonderful uh, presentation and a wonderful moment to share lessons around this case study in Sri Lanka. Thank you so much. Over to you. Thank you very much, Master Sergeric. So I now I would like to introduce our speakers for the day. So our first speaker is uh, Ms. Udeshika Jayapali. Uh, she's a graduate in environmental management and forestry. And currently she works as a project coordinator in Center for Sustainability of University of Sri Jayapura. She's a researcher in wildlife conservation and management. And she was a research assistant in the visit to Damban Indigenous, a community with Eval Indigenous representatives in 2018. Udeshika's ex expertises are in quantitative and qualitative research methods and environmental management. Uh, and our second speaker, uh, Anjana can, yes, thank you. So our second speaker is uh, Mr. Ramdikiti Mel. And he is an evaluator and social researcher that focuses on rural livelihoods, gender, renewable energy, uh, agriculture, public health, and education. His work experience includes monitoring and evaluation and research projects in the USA, Kenya, Philippines, Jamaica, Senegal, and Sri Lanka. Currently, he is serving as the editor of the Executive Council and focal point for young and emerging evaluators for the Sri Lanka Evaluation Association. And also, he is the co leader for Evaluate Sri Lanka and Evaluate Asia. And our third speaker is uh, Mr. Dulmina Chamatkara. Mr. Dulmina is also a graduate in environmental management and has completed a postgraduate diploma in monitoring and evaluation. Currently, he is following his master's degree in environmental management and engineering. His ex expertise includes qualitative and quantitative research methods, data collection, and data analyzing skills. He has been engaged with different international development partners, such as USAID, UNICEF, ADB, since 2017, and also closely worked with the Parliamentarian Research Unit in Sri Lanka. So without taking more time, I would like to uh, invite our speakers to share their experience and knowledge on this case study. Over to your speakers. Thank you, Hasiti. Yes, uh, can everyone see my screen? Uh, yes, we can. Uh, yes, Chamatkar, uh, you can put in slideshow move, slideshow. I think it's in uh, slideshow mode. Yes, can yes, you? it is. Yeah. You can stop. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so good uh, morning, uh, good evening, uh, good morning and good afternoon for everyone. Yes, uh, I have been to uh, 16 uh, previous uh, slave webinar and this time uh, it's going to be uh, uh, somewhat different from the previous webinars because uh, this time uh, we are going to speak about the uh, practical uh, project that uh, did uh, from, uh, with, uh, from SREVA, uh, Eval Indigenous Project Team, uh, young uh, team, uh, regarding the uh, Ratugala non-commercialized indigenous community. So uh, uh, here uh, we are going to discuss about the key uh, findings that we uh, gained from the, uh, uh, the study and uh, before that, uh, the research methodology that we used and the background and also the evaluation practices used by uh, the indigenous communities in Sri Lanka, uh, focusing on uh, Ratugal community. So uh, as uh, mentioned, uh, by, uh, so this is the uh, outline for today that we are going to uh, speak about. 
and uh, as uh, mr eric mentioned uh, they visited uh, dambana the capital of indigenous communities of sri lanka in 2018 parallel to the eval indigenous eval kalamba 2018 global conference and uh, they uh, observed the current uh, situation the challenges and cultural practices that uh, uh, of the uh, indigenous community in dambana and uh, met urwarige vanilato the uh, head of the uh, all uh, all the indigenous communities in sri lanka so then uh, they could uh, bring uh, him to uh, evalkaram 2018 global conference representing the uh, indigenous communities all over the world so then uh, when uh, eval indigenous uh, called for proposal for the uh, small grants project uh, we decided to uh, with the with the uh, expertise of uh, mr sir kalu gampati the president of sri lanka evolution association we decided to uh, do a project uh, as a continuation of that project targeting ratugala indigenous com community because uh, now uh, uh, the damban indigenous uh, community is um, somewhat commercialized because of the tourism and other things but uh, ratugala community community uh, is not that much uh, communities are not popular with the uh, with the uh, local people even so uh, we received uh, five uh, two five hundred uh, dollars uh, grants five hundred dollars each uh, for conduct the project and also to disseminate the findings so this webinar is one part of the dissemination project we should uh, because though we start in the findings and other things we should uh, thank uh, the central cultural fund and the vedda heritage center in gatugala they helped us a lot and also uh, dr fiona cram and also uh, mr sir jerry kapum coaches of uh, eval uh, indigenous and uh, also mr asela kalugampitiya for the uh, expertise and the uh, guidance uh, as always uh, to give us and also ms ama vanyarachi part, part of our team and uh, 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 she is also a researcher anthropologist so we could uh, and mr gaya uh, the project lead of uh, central cultural fund of sri lanka for the ratuga heritage center so they helped us a lot to conduct uh, to uh, make this uh, project a success uh, and uh, when uh, comes to uh, indigenous community in sri lanka so it uh, according to the uh, documentations ancient documents especially mahavansa it uh, uh, identifies that uh, vedda community we call indigenous community in sri lanka as vedda community they are indigenous uh, people are uh, uh, descendants from uh, king uh, vijaya who uh, migrated here from india uh, around uh, uh, 540 before bc and uh, the kuwaini a local uh, princess here and they uh, get married and uh, after the king vijaya uh, has passed away uh, they were abandoned from the locals and uh, then the the kuwaini the princess and also uh, their children and uh, that uh, the belief uh, is that uh, they are the they, they are the different descendants from these uh, uh, children the uh, the indigenous community so uh, so because of that uh, they called as uh, forest dwellers also and uh, they are scattered around uh, eastern ua and north central provinces so uh, there are uh, like five villages ratugala is one of the uh, non popular one damban is the capital of the uh, vaddas uh, now it can be considered as the uh, uh, capital and uh, urwarige vanila is the head of the uh, all communities live uh, lives there and ratugala there is uh, another sub leader uh, called uh, suda vanila is the danigala mahabandala ge suda vanila is so uh, Though they are Ratugala is uh, Ratugala community is somewhat uh, isolated from other communities, they have uh, several relationships. They uh, have some uh, councils uh, of uh, indigenous communities. They have, whether, when they have these things, they have, they uh, visit the uh, capital and uh, uh, engage with these rituals and other uh, engagement. So. Uh, when it uh, comes to uh, uh, these are the locations actually the damban uh, is located in the uh, damban uh, badulla district and also uh, and ratugal uh, indigenous in the, the uh, in sri lanka and ratugal indigenous communities uh, located in the monraga district sri lanka both uh, both the belongs to uh, uwa province uh, in the uh, sri lanka middle of the country and uh, when it uh, comes to ratugal indigenous community there are uh, 
two tribes. I mean, they, they, now they uh, used two uh, surnames, Danigala Mahabandaralagi and Palabandaralagi, that they uh, uh, used to live in uh, the Danigala uh, hill, around the hill, and also in the, in the, at the plain uh, beside the hill. Now, because of the construction of the large tank, Senana Examudde, they uh, were migrated to uh, the Ratugala area. Now, both the tribes are living together uh, in that uh, area. And uh, as per the government records, and also uh, we had some discussions with the government officials, Gram uh, some of the officers, as they are uh, uh, detailed data information, they are at uh, around 250. Uh, 60 uh, indigenous uh, people in the Tugal area. And from them, uh, 26 uh, are poor, pure uh, indigenous families. And there are 28 mixed families that they are they have married uh, uh, people from the Chinghala and Tamil communities around. And also uh, when they uh, went to their jobs and uh, likewise. Uh, anyway, now uh, they have 258 uh, indigenous uh, people living in uh, that area. So uh, when it comes to the uh, purpose of this study, actually uh, we uh, designed this, uh, this project to uh, do a comparison between the uh, commercialization and commercialization of indigenous communities. We had uh, details about, uh, we have we still have uh, details about uh, Dambana village from the report and also most of the findings from other researchers. Uh, the Dambana report done by Sir Jerick and uh, Mr. John uh, Joe in uh, uh, 2018, parallel to uh, Eval Colombo uh, conference. And uh, we uh, here we focused on uh, Ratugal community, uh, that unpopular community. Dambana, as per the records, Dambana uh, is highly commercialized because uh, it's, a, uh, it's somewhat popular tourist destination in the country, uh, uh, local as well as uh, foreign, uh, foreign, foreign tourists. So they used, uh, freak, uh, they used to uh, sell honey gathered from the same medicines gathered from the forest and also demonstrate their cultural practices, rituals uh, to uh, these uh, tourists and uh, earn money uh, from uh, these activities. But when it uh, goes to Ratugala area, it's a uh, somewhat rural, uh, and actually they don't have no, uh, they don't have uh, proper uh, water, communication facilities, accommodation. Likewise, so uh, very few visitors uh, come into their there. Uh, I mean the Ratugala area. So most of the people, uh, most of the Ratugala uh, indigenous community, depending on uh, depends on uh, uh, the forest, natural resource that they have. Only few are doing uh, like trading uh, and other. Uh, activities. Uh, there are some people who are uh, going, I mean, migrating to other uh, areas uh, because of the uh, resources avail resource availability, but still uh, these people are uh, somewhat uh, non-commercialized. I mean, they are uh, uh, doing uh, with natural resources. And uh, when uh, and they, uh, and uh, when uh, we uh, doing the, do the, the study, we focused on the same uh, criteria used by uh, uh, Mr. Serge and also Mr. Joel: uh, livelihoods, uh, cultural values, uh, language, religion, indigenous medical practices, evaluation process, and also uh, role of gender. And also, there are there is a specific uh, uh, purpose of this study to explore the possibility of um, evaluation project. Uh, with this uh, with this community and uh, you will get to know about our proposed uh, evaluation topic uh, during the webinar and uh, when it uh, comes to uh, research method really that uh, and uh, the data collection method that we use actually uh, we uh, we had an idea that uh, there's 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 uh, this kind of community and popular uh, I mean, uh, that uh, not that much famous uh, community in Ratugal area but we haven't made then we had no any idea, so we, we decided to uh, go on a pilot visit uh, and uh, get an idea about the community. So we visited uh, uh, with the support of Central Cultural Fund. We visited the Vedda Heritage Center in Ratugala, and it's it, it, it is also newly built. Uh, it's, it's not open yet, but we can, we could visit there, and uh, uh, we met with uh, the Ratugala community, uh, indigenous community head, and also deputy head. 
heads and also few uh, we observed few houses and uh, met two uh, principals uh, there are two uh, schools uh, the area that Ratuga indigenous community also went a mixed school with Sinhala, Tamil and other local communities and uh, we visited uh, these uh, institutions and other areas and uh, met people and get, get an, uh, got an idea about the community and I found some uh, uh, details from the other sources also. And then we decided to have a qualitative uh, study. Uh, and also we thought uh, it is appropriate to use a participatory approach. So uh, our, uh, we uh, decided to take a, a person uh, from the indigenous community to our uh, team. So uh, we had more recognition because of that. And uh, we uh, could gain their uh, ideas also to the questionnaires and uh, for the focus group discussions likewise. And um, we uh, did the field work on 25th to 26th, uh, uh, I mean, uh, field work on 2nd to 5th of September 2020. And um, uh, as per the part of the dissemination project, we were planning to go to uh, Ratugala again on 30th this week, uh, Friday, but because of the prevailing conditions of the country, we had to postpone it, but uh, within uh, the next week, uh, next, next month, so uh, uh, within the next uh, two or three months, we definitely visit there and discuss the, uh, these findings and uh, make arrangements to do a, a further, to extend this project uh, more uh, with the support of Eval Genius or any other uh, initiative. So uh, these are the data collection methods that we uh, used. Uh, we uh, did uh, 11 key informative, uh, key informative interviews with uh, uh, the village head Sudhavan Milato and uh, deputy leaders, few, uh, a few other few, a few members, and also government officials like Graham Nildari, the uh, chief uh, officer of the village, and Samudhi Nildari, the finance officer, principal, and uh, principal, two principals, and other officers, and uh, also doctor. There's a small medical dispensary run by the government only one doctor and one nurse so we uh, had discussion with them and uh, also religious leaders there's a, a temple uh, with the monk and also there's another a church nearby newly built uh, with the father and also we had some focus group discussions with uh, the men and women and both uh, both of them and also there's a police uh, post separate police force uh, for the security of the chief of the uh, indigenous community and also uh, the villagers, uh, it was, uh, we did, had a discussion with them. And we did some field observation, we visited their houses, uh, cultural, uh, we, um, uh, they demonstrated some of their cultural values to us and also uh, their uh, livelihood practices, how, do, uh, how they process the collected medicines from the uh, forest, likewise. And also we uh, did some document reviews uh, from a Central Fund, uh, Cultural Fund and also uh, other sources that we gave. Uh, so uh, these are the, this is the background of the project and also the uh, uh, Ratuka indigenous uh, community. So I invite our project lead, uh, Udeshika Jayapal, to discuss about the key findings that we uh, got from the study. Over to you, Udeshika. Thank you, Chamatkara. Now I'm going to discuss the key findings of this study. When considering their livelihoods, uh, there are significant changes in their livelihood practices compared to their tra uh, traditional livelihood methods. Uh, mainly they gather resources from forests like velvet tamarind and uh, the other important thing is they harvest honey from natural bee and wasp hives. Though they use the forest uh, to gather items, they did then do uh, do it uh, still do it in uh, it in a sustainable manner. When you are doing evaluation studies, I think uh, as we all believe, uh, sustainability of environment is significant. And when considering livelihoods, uh, uh, agriculture. This is mostly related to the sustainable development goals and they still use the sustainability practices and they don't use uh, pe chemical pesticides or weedicides. They use um, natural uh, material uh, for the paste and weeds and we can also learn from them uh, like, uh, like sustainable consumption. And when considering cultural values and religion, uh, they still worship Kweni, which Chamatkara previously discussed, and their goddess and uh, gods. 
um, and also their main religious belief is Buddhism. It's important to study about their culture as evaluators, and it's really significant to understand and respect indigenous community cultural values and traditions in order to design and study properly and conduct it. And uh, these are the pictures. Next slide. These are the pictures. Those indicate the cultural values and beliefs. The right picture shows their gods, goddess, and deities. And the left side picture indicates a cultural festival that held at Ratupala. Uh, when considering the indigenous language, uh, where the language, which is the indigenous language, is spoken less at Ratupala when uh, compared to Dambana. And uh, still some use mixed words with uh, Sinhala, uh, with Sinhala language. And um, it's important to have someone from their community to uh, interpret the answers. And in our team, we had a community representative and he translated our questions to them and even he interpreted their answers to us. And uh, there are both advantages and disadvantages of mixing these two languages, which, is, which are indigenous language, Vedda language, and Sinhala language. As an advantage of speaking Sinhala, uh, they can easily access to public services like uh, health and education. And also as a disadvantage of, um, uh, they, they, of not using their indigenous language, the Vedda language becomes extinct. And in term, when considering their indigenous medicine, they still use their traditional medical practices for fever, colds, fractures, and wounds. And in terms of sustainable development, uh, side effects from these natural materials are negligible and they don't use any synthetic material. Most of their food have uh, medical values. And um, uh, when considering the issues regarding indigenous medicine, uh, most uh, most of the younger generation they don't have the indigenous medical uh, knowledge and also they are, there's an issue regarding the access to the forest to collect these items. Um, in evaluation studies, it's always important to look at gender equality and equity and there's no any discrimination between men and women in Ratugala uh, community and they both men and women, they engage in their day-to-day -day, um, activities. But when considering hunting, only men go to the forest for hunting and women stay at their homes doing house chores and uh, looking after their children. And uh, the main problem we identified here is the problem of high teenage pregnancy. And uh, uh, this may be due to, their, due to the lack of sexual education. And education, education is a huge problem in Ratugala and education is the most important when considering sustainability of a community. So now they, now some of them consider education is vital based on, uh, based on our community observations and interviews. And uh, when considering the issues regarding the education in Ratugala, uh, there's a high rate dropouts from um, schools and uh, the main issue is that conflict between two cultures, conflict between the indigenous community culture and the Sinhala culture. And that's why it's really important to understand their culture to conduct these type of uh, studies. And uh, one of the purposes of our study was also to explore the possibilities to plan for long-term evaluation projects in Ratugala indigenous community. And when considering the observations and findings we have made, Education is the critical point here. So we have proposed another uh, project which, uh, which is an impact evaluation study on education to assess the relevance and impact of current education practices for the indigenous communities and to make recommendations to different stakeholders to improve the education system for indigenous community in a suitable manner, which leads them to preserve their culture and language. Uh, now I pass this on to Rangjit. Uh, thank you, Deshika. I will share my screen. Chamatkar. Uh, Can you guys see? Yes. Okay, you all can hear me, right? 
Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, so thank you, Deshka. So in the Indi in Ratugala indigenous communities, uh, similar to in Dambana, uh, in 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 order to determine uh, the value of their issues they face, they have indigenous society meetings monthly. These are led by uh, the indigenous community leader. Uh, and during these meetings, they talk about the issues they are facing and they make decisions collectively. Also, annually, uh, they have a community council, which is held in the indigenous uh, capital of in Sri Lanka in Dambana. Um, and indigenous uh, community members from around the country come to this council. Uh, and it's held every, uh, annually in the International Day of World International People. And during uh, this council, they talk about the important uh, important decisions are taken, especially on the issues they are facing uh, socially, economically, and culturally. And also, uh, so in terms of uh, the national evaluation system in Sri Lanka, indigenous people are not included. And also, they are also not part of SLEVA. So during our study here, even though uh, we were doing a research study, we, during our pre-field pre works, uh, study when we went, we uh, helped to raise awareness about the field of evaluation. So they have an idea about it and also promote uh, the work Slava is doing in the country, especially in order to create an evaluation culture. That's why we think like in when we're doing evaluation studies in Sri Lanka in, in certain areas where, are, where there are indigenous communities, we need to include them in evaluation studies. So part of the 2030 agenda that no one is left behind. We have to uh, provide them, a, uh, we have to give them a voice, especially to these marginalized communities in order to improve their lives. Um, and also during our study, the indigenous community leader uh, was is very supportive of uh, researchers doing research and evaluation studies. He's very open to it. Uh, even uh, uh, Mr. Sergey and John, when they did their study in Damana, that's the same thing they also found. But uh, the community leader here said that um, you, that if researchers or evaluators are doing studies, they have to respect their community and not do any harm to their village or their or their culture while doing these studies. And also, he mentioned that there are researchers who have done studies there and written inaccurate things about them and with and he complained that without checking with them so that's why i we think that when you are doing based on our time we spent there when we are doing evaluation studies it's it's i think it's appropriate to use a participatory evaluation approach especially to get the indigenous community and their leaders and other stakeholders involved in the evaluation process from start to finish um, from start to finish, and so, and then they are empowered also to uh, take ownership of the evaluation, uh, take ownership of the evaluation process and project as well. Um, and uh, so, now I would like to talk about some of the key recommendations we, uh, from our study. So, one thing is that there has to be proper recognition in Sri Lanka of the indigenous community. Uh, so, in order for them to protect their identity and cultural heritage. Uh, so for example, some of the stakeholders mentioned that the laws in Sri Lanka have to be permitted for them to do hunting and gathering, which they have served, done for thousands of years. So in, as Chamatkar and Udeshka mentioned, they're restricted now on doing that. And they, they feel like that's such an important part of their culture. So, and another recommendation is that uh, a national museum should be developed for the indigenous community in order to preserve their culture. So in this museum, documentation of their language, indigenous medical practices, cultural practices and artifacts should be preserved. Uh, and another thing uh, we want to rec uh, we recommend is that uh, cultural tourism, especially for the Ratugala community should be promoted in order, um, uh, so in order for them to have, uh, uh, for in order for them to preserve their uh, culture and identity. And so this is a good way because they have the Central Cultural Front in Sri Lanka have created a cultural center there recently where we were doing our study. Uh, and so that's a good place actually for them to do their cultural shows uh, to show 
to uh, foreign and domestic tourists. In, so in that way, their culture can be preserved uh, going forward. Uh, and now I would like to talk about uh, some of the proposed evaluation better practices for indigenous community studies based on our observations and the time we spent there. So even though we were doing a, uh, we did a research study, we were also thinking uh, as evaluators, what kind of things should we take into account when we go forward working in these communities? So these are some of our uh, recommendations. Uh, of uh, our some of our proposals. So one thing it's important for evaluators to be culturally competent working with indigenous communities. So according to the American Evaluation Association principles, uh, evaluators have an ethical commitment to fairness and equity to all stakeholders. That's why uh, it's important to understand the culture the practices and norms of these communities before we do studies. As a team, before we, uh, we did this study, we, we took time to read literature about the Ratugala community. And also we spoke to our teammate who's an archeologist uh, who, who has worked with the indigenous community to learn about the cultural practices. And that's why, like Shamat Kar also mentioned, we went on a pre-field visit uh, to learn about uh, their cultural practices and also to explain about the purpose of our study. And also when working here in these communities it's important to design your uh, data collection tools in a culturally appropriate manner. So for example, when even for example, our interview questions have to be uh, appropriate to their cultural context of the indigenous communities. So one thing when we went on our free field, week, field work visit, we tested some of our interview questions um, uh, pilot tested them with the community and the leaders, and they actually gave us feedback and also to, uh, towards some of the questions, the phrases and stuff like that. And also work when we work in these communities, it's because of the low literacy also, very important to have informed consent and also um, to get their verbal consent and to explain this, what our studies and not to force anyone to take part. So we have to be very uh, careful with all that and um, be very respectful uh, to uh, their community and their, uh, and their culture. And another thing is, um, it's very important to build relationship and trust before you do the study. That's why, like Chamat Kara mentioned, uh, for this study, we went on a pre-field field work visit before we did do the studies in order to build the relation and trust with the community leaders and community to get to also get the community buy-in, uh, which is very important during these studies. Um, and um, another thing is, as evaluators, when we work, we had uh, when you go on this pre-field week, free field work visits, you learn about their cultural sensitivity issues. Also, for example, the in our in our case, the community leader told us that when we are doing focus groups to do it uh, separate, uh, have separate for males and females and the female focus group uh, should be facilitated by a female team member of us. Uh, so in that way, the, the women, the indigenous women will be more open uh, to discuss their issues and their problems they're facing. Um, and uh, that's why we did two focus groups with males, um, facilitated by males and two with females. Uh, two focus groups. So another thing uh, I, uh, based on uh, for evaluation, one thing is useful also is to have an advisory council. Uh, so Cohen in his article, uh, journal article, advisory groups for evaluation in diverse cultural groups, communities and contexts, uh, published in the American Evaluation Association Journal, says that uh, if an evaluator is outside coming from a different culture, it's useful to have an advisory council because it uh, also it um, provides feedback and uh, guidance for the evaluator during the study. So this is uh, one thing I have used with my team working in diverse communities in Senegal in Kasamas region uh, with religious, uh, religiously diverse and ethnically diverse communities. And actually when uh, even the author says when you use advisory council, it also provides credibility and legitimacy for an evaluator, especially coming from a different culture. And uh, so he recommends that when you do these studies to have about uh, evaluation studies in advisory council to have about five to seven members. So 
uh, when you work in the indigenous community, it's important to, when you're having advisory council, to have the indigenous community leader, indigenous community members, local government officials and project staff to provide the advice and feedback during, during the evaluation process. And these are some of the main tasks and responsibility of an evaluation advisory council. So as you can see, to be involved throughout the evaluation process here. And also, in our, when I, we have used this, it's been helpful that they have given us advice since we have come from different cultures on the cultural competency. And, uh, but one thing when working, uh, when using advisory council, it's, uh, uh, it takes a lot of resources sometimes and it's time consuming, but it's a good way to keep all your stakeholders engaged in the project and uh, get them involved throughout the process. Uh, so another thing is uh, if, uh, when we are working in these communities, it's useful to have an indigenous community team member in the team. So we were, uh, we had a team member. So it all, when you have, Indigenous community member also helps to increase your cultural competence in the team to learn about their culture more. Uh, and also it brings about diversity of thought because we are outsiders and they're in they're from the inside. And so we all have different experiences uh, and different worldviews. So it's good that we have a diversity in our team uh, by having a member. And also, especially it also helps to connect to local networks there because they, they the the community member part of the team is they trust him uh, so and he actually our team member was very helpful for us to connect especially with the religious leaders the local government officials and also their community leaders um, and also in most important it helps to build their evaluation capacity and knowledge so there's hardly any indigenous people i think in sri lanka involved in the evaluation field so this is a good way uh, when we do studies to get them also involved because according to UN article 18 on the rights of indigenous people they have the right for decision making so eval indigenous also is focused on that to help build their evaluation capacity uh, and another thing I would like to talk about it's important to disseminate the findings so like I mentioned earlier there were certain researchers who have come and uh, written inaccurate things about them so that's why uh, when we do the studies, it's always important to go and have a dissemination workshop. So in order to, to make sure the findings are not misinterpreted and uh, offensive to their culture. Uh, so actually, like Chamath Kara said, we were supposed to go on Thursday, but now the COVID situation has got bad in Sri Lanka. So we'll have to go at a later time. Uh, so, and finally, uh, it's important, uh, here, especially here in Sri Lanka, that we build evaluation capacities with evaluators working with indigenous communities because we have a lack of it here right now. So I think Slava uh, can take the lead like it has done other capacity building workshops to help to build the capacity of uh, young uh, evaluators who are interested working just com indigenous communities. So in that way, we help to bring their voice and help improve their lives. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And that was indeed an insightful and very informative presentation. So I, I should say that like personally as an uh, YE and especially as a Sri Lankan, I got to know very interesting facts on livelihood of Sri Lankan indigenous community as well as uh, their uh, socio-cultural aspect. And uh, I definitely believe uh, that the proposed evaluation better practices will guide the future indigenous community studies uh, in an effective and efficient manner. So now it's time for our Q. Sorry. Uh, so now it's time for our Q and A session. Uh, as I said before, uh, you can uh, leave your questions in the chat box uh, so that our presenters can answer them. So the, uh, here we have few questions actually. Um, Ms. Florence wants to know, uh, what is the notion of non-commercialized community? What exactly does this mean? Uh, can any one of our speakers can answer to this? Yeah, Chamat Kara, can you please explain that? Yes, uh, actually when we designed this uh, project, uh, we focus, at, as I mentioned, we focus about two indigenous communities, uh, Dambana, uh, which was uh, explored by uh, Mr. Sir Jerry and also Mr. John 
uh, in 2018 and also uh, Ratugal committee that we uh, went there and uh, did, did this study. Uh, by commercialization, we uh, discuss uh, uh, we uh, meant about the, uh, their livelihood uh, practices mostly because now uh, actually uh, the Dambana community is getting more uh, more uh, facilities, more uh, resources from the government and other side because uh, Haiti is the capital, capital is the Damb capital is Dambana and also there are. Uh, the, uh, the head of the uh, all the villages uh, uh, is uh, living there, Uruvarigi uh, Vanilato, and they have more recognition and uh, always, uh, and he is um, uh, recognized as one of the uh, leader of uh, in the political leader and of the leader in the country. So they always get uh, more uh, attention from the government and uh, government and also from the other communities and other villages other donors and other uh, any uh, other company even in the local and other forest but uh, so they have uh, they, they uh, do uh, most of their things to gain some uh, gain uh, income from these initiatives mostly they sell uh, they are uh, uh, the collected honey uh, and also they uh, are not uh, they are doing that much agricultural practices they de demonstrate their uh, cultural um, Practices like Kirikorahanatuma and other uh, uh, cultural practices uh, to uh, the visitors for money. But when uh, it comes to uh, the Ratugala village, uh, they have not that much uh, commercial, commercialized practices. They still they consume what they gather from the uh, uh, forest. Their houses are not that much uh, built. They are not uh, that much improved. So they they are still rural, and uh, uh, so we uh, we uh, we uh, we focus this criteria uh, when uh, propose this uh, word non commercialized and non commercialized. So that's why we uh, use this term uh, commercialization and non commercialized. I okay. think it's okay. So okay. if you have anything, you can. Help. Okay, I think uh, that gives a complete answer for Ms. Holland. And um, there is uh, like few questions regarding these uh, families, uh, the status of Pew and mixed uh, on the families, these indigenous families. Uh, I'll combine two of these and uh, she's, um, not this one, maybe Ms. Udeshika can uh, answer this question. So Dora uh, is asking, is there a social hierarchy between pure and mixed indigenous families? And how is this played out in day-to-day -day interactions activities? Ms. Udeshika, we can't okay. uh, hear you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, according to the indigenous community and government officials and their leaders, the current surnames of these indigenous communities came from two tri tribes, which are Danigala Mahambandaralage, the tribe who lived in the Danigala rock, and the Thala Bandaralage, who lived on the plain at the bottom of the Danigala rock. And they lived in the natural caves available inside the jungle, and they migrated to the current location about six or 70 years ago due to, the va due to various reasons. And at Ratugala, there are 26 pure indigenous families, which both parents are indigenous, which that both parents have those surnames, and 28 mixed families. One parent is indigenous and the other one is Sinhala. And all together, 258 indigenous people live in Ratugala community. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, can I? Yes, uh, I can add uh, more to that answer from this. And I have seen another questions regarding uh, that uh, uh, that uh, PO and uh, uh, mixed families. Actually, uh, uh, as uh, Udeshika mentioned, they are they are they are they are living together. Uh, they they live uh, together. With, they do their interaction, uh, every, everything uh, together. But their surnames are. Uh, change. They some of they uh, have uh, singular or Tamil surnames uh, and them, but uh, one uh, one uh, of the family member, one of the their parents are uh, from uh, indigenous community, 
and uh, some uh, i saw i think laura has asked uh, a question whether uh, they have any uh, issues in uh, interacting uh, their actually they don't have that kind of issues in their community but uh, after uh, but when uh, uh, public officials and uh, they uh, discuss about these families they they uh, they just mention that they uh, have uh, these kind of uh, villages uh, this this kind of uh, this number of uh, mixed and this number of uh, geo families but uh, we couldn't identify identify that uh, any conflict between these uh, two or any neglections like by uh, in these uh, communities thank you very much and uh, one of the participants is interested in knowing like uh, what was the covid impact when you guys were like uh, uh, conducting this research uh, research study and uh, there is another question on uh, were the uh, focus group discussions were mixed like in other words men and women together and how many uh, focus group discussions that you have conducted okay um so let me answer that in terms of the covid situation at that time the country we were following all the health guidelines set out by the sri lankan government and it was very relaxed at that time uh so and so we followed the guidelines set out at that time in july and september uh and uh, we uh, and there were uh, and we checked with the community as well before we went so we uh, that's why even you can see we had the distance so we tried to keep the distance and it was all outdoors as well um and in terms of the focus groups like i mentioned earlier uh we had four focus groups uh two Uh, with men and uh, with men and two fgds with females so like i said because of the cultural setting they prefer uh, females uh, in the indigenous community members prefer to be uh, interviewed separately from the men and, and with a female facilitator because uh, there are not many research studies done in this community in ratugala so there are still you know you have to build that relationship luckily because we had a team member from there uh the their community and also we had our other team member uh, ms ama who was is an archaeologist who has worked in that community so she uh because of the relationship she had with the community they were willing to come and take part in the studies if not like i mentioned earlier the community leader some is open but also hesitant sometimes because people have whatever studies they have done have written inaccurate things about them and also sometimes they feel like people come and just use their name uh to uh get publicity and money and stuff like that so there is a lot of uh apprehension in that way that's why that's why we i uh, we gave you uh, we explained us some of the better practices it's very important to build that relationship and trust in these communities we have to remember them very marginalized uh and especially in sri lanka also they have no recognition uh so they see us as outsiders so that's why we studied these communities a lot before we went we just in walk in uh and uh, and we got the right people involved in our team as well that's why cultural competency is critical oh, right thank you randika uh i mean there are so many questions popping up in the chat bar but uh, due to the limited time uh, i might uh, pick just one more question and it's regarding this teenage pregnancy and um oh, like one uh participant uh, wanted to know that like uh, what were the issue uh, related to teenage pregnancy and is there any mechanism to address that issue udeshika do you want to jump in and one of you Uh, maybe i can answer uh, for the question uh, randika if there's anything you can uh, add yes sir actually uh, we uh, interviewed the uh, doctor the medical doctor of the area only person only one doctor is available for like uh, it, uh, the, the, this indigenous uh, village is located uh, uh, beside the forest and uh, the nearest hospital they have to go uh, like 35 kilometers it's a long distance compared to the transportation facilities availability of transportation facilities and other thing so as per the uh, the medical doctor in the area 
he mentioned that there are several um, teenage uh, pregnancy uh, yes um, uh, incidents that uh, he has addressed and also may, uh, directed to the main hospital even these uh, girls car don't have enough uh, money to go to the nearest hospital to proper uh, these um, arrangements for the preg uh, pregnancy likewise for the clinics and any other thing and also uh, it was uh, uh, mentioned by the principal of the uh, uh, school also ratugal village uh, school principal also mentioned that there are several uh, teenage dropouts because one uh, one reason uh, is they uh, uh, don't care about the education and they don't have idea other one is the most uh, for the uh, teenage girls it is the reason is uh, the pregnancy uh, teenage pregnancy and uh, uh, as most of them mentioned the main reason is uh, uh, lack of uh, sexual education and also the education uh, in, the, in the general education and also the sex, uh, lack of, lack of uh, sexual education it was uh, highlighted uh, by the medical doctor also nandika if you have anything you can add yes uh, yeah, and also yeah. and also oh, okay randy you and uh, uh, udeshka go ahead yeah. since you interviewed and, them yeah and also in the fgds where we can uh, interview the women and uh, many of them had their children uh, in the ages of like 15 to 18 and they mentioned that they didn't have enough money to continue their schooling and they had to marry uh, marry and have children and also they don't like to do uh, contraception uh, LRTs uh, and uh, and actually they don't have enough sexual education as they answered. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. One more thing I'll add since time is running up. Uh, like we, uh, one thing is because of the lack of education. So there is a high teenage pregnancy. They drop out. That's why in actually in our paper we are recommended that uh, special focus has to be to make sure that these uh, girls and even the males stay on in school uh, because they all drop out after in secondary education before they finish secondary education that they complete. So even speaking to the stakeholders there, uh, there has to be uh, a, a collaborative effort from all the stake, key stakeholders there to work together to ensure that these students uh, stay on in school. And especially like Udeshika mentioned, they lack the resources and also their parents uh, have not gone to school, mm -hmm. so because mm -hmm. of that, they lack role models as well. Okay. Uh, okay thank, thank you. you. Thank you uh, to all their speakers. And I mean, there are a lot of questions regarding education and uh, uh, more questions on FD um, focused group discussions. Maybe if we like our production team can put our email addresses on the in the chat bar, uh, our speakers can write to uh, these questions. Um, and, and now I would like to uh, invite uh, Mr. Anjana Vedage uh, to give the closing remarks. Anjana, over to you. Uh, can you hear me, Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so uh, it was a very informative webinar, I should say. Uh, we learned uh, so much about the Sri Lankan indigenous community. And uh, we got to know about the beauty and the culture and the traditions of uh, Sri Lankan indigenous community and also uh, the difficulties they face. Um, so I would like to especially thank the Sleva Ival Indigenous team, uh, the team leader Udeshika, uh, Randika Chamatkara, and all the uh, other team members who helped uh, the, um, the research here, and also the Atugala Indigenous community members who helped uh, this research, and also uh, the Sleva board and the Sleva uh, who helped uh, this uh, wonderful research. And then I would like to thank our wonderful moderator, Hasidhi Samvarsingha, for moderating this uh, event very well. And we were able to finish it on time. And at last, uh, again, I would like to uh, thank Sleva, and especially uh, Ivali Indigenous uh, for giving us this great opportunity to do this research, and Asia Pacific Evaluation Association, Center for Evaluation, and uh, Evaluation Community of India. And uh, thank you, everyone. And over to you, Hasati. Thank you very much, Anjana. 
And so as for the last thing, I would like to invite you for our next webinar on footprint evaluation, which is on how can we embed uh, consideration of environmental sustainability into all evaluations. So uh, don't forget to register for this. And thank you all for your wonderful participation and especially for your active participation. And if you have further inquiries, uh, you can write to our speakers or uh, to SLEVA or Center for Evaluation uh, in Jayavadnipur University. Uh, I think uh, the email address is uh, on the flyer. So thanks once again. I uh, hope you guys will stay safe with amid this uh, COVID uh, crisis. Thank you.